Hi, this is Tom from Six Foot Networks, and I'd like to talk to you this evening about some of the documented differences between macOS Mojave, which is the latest version of macOS as of the making of this video, and its predecessor, macOS High Sierra. Now, there are several, you know, opinions about whether or not an upgrade to a major OS is a requirement. You know, in terms of security, what people may not know is that some of the OS's going back are actually supported for quite a few years after a new OS is released. So High Sierra will still be supported moving forward on a security update basis as long as the applications that are on that OS are actually supported uh, with uh, the new updates. So in this video, I'd like to go over a few of the documented features that Apple has put out, particularly in the Worldwide Developer Conference, as well as some of their other uh, you know, release events that they do. So first things first, I'm gonna just start at the top. At the, at the top is the APFS file system. Now, Apple, hit some roadblock when they released APFS back in High Sierra. You know, APFS is the new uh, file system that replaced the HFS Plus uh, file system that's been in play since probably the late 90s. I'm guessing about 97 or 98 uh, it was released in one of the uh, versions way, way back of... Uh, OS X, even before OS X, I believe HF, some form of HFS was, HFS was used. Now they had some roadblocks when they released this uh, back in High Sierra, in that there were certain disks that were not supported. For example, the Apple Fusion drive was not supported. If your disk had this hybrid drive, or even a mechanical standard hard drive, you would not be able to do an H an APFS conversion from HFS Plus when you did the upgrade. Um, so that was kind of a, a partial release that they did and a lot of people that already had upgraded had found that you know their computers were still running HFS Plus. So since then Apple has finished developing APFS further and now those disks would be converted to APFS on upgrade. Um, a little side note, uh, according to several posters on various forums online, they had noticed that their disks had a bit more free space. Now, as you can see here, you know, I, I'm dealing with a relatively small disk on this laptop. And to be honest, I wasn't paying attention to it, but you can see I'm using a lot of it. I mean, I, you know, this, this computer is uh, full of pictures, full of documents full of everything and I normally don't take notice if you know an upgrade manages to bring back some free space I do believe somewhere along the line that you would get some space back just because of you know caches and things that get cleared when you do an upgrade however some posters have specifically said that they've researched it and they found out that their discs had a little bit more free space after they converted to APFS. And whether or not that's true, it's left to be seen. However, I can see that being a benefit, you know, with some of the older MacBook Airs, you know, that only shipped with a 120 gig non-user upgradable flash disk. So that would probably be a, a good way to look at it. Um, this computer has a flash disk in it. It's only a half terabyte, but I, you know, I move on. I don't really pay attention to disk space unless I'm getting messages that I'm running out of disk space. It's a bad practice, but my production uh, laptop and, and every Mac Mini and Mac Pro that I use uh, typically have two terabyte disks and higher, so it takes a long time for those disks to fill up. And I keep my computers pretty clean. So moving on, the next thing, next feature on the list is true native dark mode. Now Mojave has greatly improved dark mode. As you can see here, you know, 
basically everything is dark on the map. Everything from the, you know, the dock down below to the uh, toolbar up above. I have some apps open here. Here's Safari um, system preferences and the calendar app. And basically, you know, you can specify right here under system preferences general whether or not you want to use the light, which is the standard theme, or the dark, you know, full native dark theme. And you can see here that it truly changes a lot of things into dark mode, which is, I believe, you know, a, a great feature. You know, I believe that dark mode should be a favorite among guys who like to geek out you know in terms of coding or scripting in the middle of the night because this the interface isn't glaring at you anymore it's really soothing and and calm and you can read the text you know there's enough you know light here to make the computer functional you know it's it's one of those things where you almost have to you know try it use it and learn to love it because it almost grows on you from the instant you enable it in fact all of my computers are full-time dark mode and every time i go to an older computer that has the standard light theme uh, which is the full brightness everything's white uh, you know the standard mac colors it is just a little overwhelming for me so I'm sure you'll love dark mode and it's one of those things that you just have to try. Uh, the next feature is this gallery view. Uh, you know, this feature actually replaced the old cover view that was in the Finder. Uh, this is just a Finder window that I have opened highlighting the utilities folder. Now this kind of looks like a photo type, you know, make the icon huge view it gives you some details here kind of like the get info window was kind of embedded into this gallery view where you can go through and you know click on things and find that you know the folder icon is beautiful um, I can see this possibly working a bit better if you have documents where maybe it will show you a preview here um, I can't say for sure this is kind of as far as I went with it to be honest I never really used the cover view um, before gallery but you can enable this in the finder as either hitting you know command 4 which is here you can see the shortcut here or just viewing finder as gallery and you can do this per window I typically prefer this view where I can have all my information uh, relevant information that I have you know right in front of me here so that's pretty much it for gallery uh, there's a little quirk under gallery where I'm not sure if there's a logical uh, sorting here you know there's no way to really outside of sorting by the standard file types I don't know if you know if that really affects anything here if you use it and you love it and you have a decent opinion about it feel free to drop a comment below I'd love to take a look and uh, and explore this further you know when time allows so that's the gallery view the next feature I'd like to talk about is called desktop stacks now this is new to Mac OS Mojave and you know basically the question comes you know have you ever come to a desktop where you can't see the wallpaper as there's just files and folders everywhere and it basically covers up you know this beautiful picture here well now you have the ability to group things into stacks so if you have a whole bunch of files now I just took a whole you know a whole collection here of samples there's some pictures different kind of pictures a bitmap uh, some text files some old firewall logs that I had from 2017 and then some folders here and you can literally go through you know shuffle these around however you want um, 
not sure if this makes any difference, but this is just to illustrate kind of the functionality. You know, if we take everything and just kind of mash it together, you know, you can go through and then up in the view menu, you can use stacks. Also, you can use this uh, shortcut here to enable it. Now, if I let this go, it just put everything except the folders that was on purpose. You have some applications, you got some documents, and you got some images. And I believe the applications are is the bitmap because I don't think it natively understands what it is. But you can see that now everything is under stacks. And if you click on that stack, it automatically explodes the, the stack. You can see it, there's a little upside down triangle here. It says documents. You can collapse it. Uh, let's see what's under application. Oh no, actually it sorted the aliases that I had on the desktop for some of the new apps that I'm going to talk about in a minute under applications. I actually forgot they were there <laughs> until I sorted them. And then the folders of course are by themselves. So if you have a file, not a folder, but file, you can group documents or files into these stacks or file type stacks that you can explode and then implode back together. Pretty cool. The other feature that goes along with Stacks that's that's really nice and it's actually been in iOS now for a while. I can't recall what version of iOS it was put in to uh, the iPhone and the iPad but screenshots are now behaving more like the functionality on the iPhone or even the iPad you know it's been a fantastic feature for me when I'm on the road and I need to you know screenshot a piece of a document mark it up on the spot and then send it immediately as a message or you know a text message or an email and it's really just a phenomenal it's a, it's a tool that you can use in your everyday you know productivity you know toolbox What's really cool about it is if you take this, now traditionally you would trigger a screenshot by holding shift command and either th uh, the number three or the number four. Number three gives you full screen of your screen. So if I, if I do that, now you can see this appear down here. This is actually the screenshot and I can click on this and I can bring it forward and I can immediately have all my tools that are in preview right in front of me just like in iOS I can I can delete it I can share it you know I can add it to photos if I want or you know airdrop it to somebody but this basically took a full screenshot so if I do if I close this um, it'll then save it because I didn't delete it it'll automatically save it under the default location which in this case is the desktop and you can actually see it's a pretty decent size uh, resolution there now if you click or if you hit shift command and the number four you'll get these crosshairs I'll try to move them into a light spot so you can see them but that's the one downside of uh, dark mode is the cursor may blend in with the darkness but you can see it here you get the you get this crosshair that you can literally go through and then click and then drag whatever box you want if you just want to send a screenshot of say that right there you would let go and here it is now you can expand this a little bit you can crop it further you can you know say you know he whoops if you wanted to, you know, draw on this, you know, obviously you'd pick a different color because that one's just not quite visible. But say you wanted to highlight something, well, there's your applications. You can even add text to this. Pick your text, add a text box, um, check this out you know whatever just for fun and then you can move it out here 
and Bob's your uncle. Or well, however else you use it. You can add signatures if you have um, you know signatures already created and still create a digital signature that you can uh, it's not technically a digital signature, it's a digital version of your analog signature. Uh, basically a picture of your signature and then you can sign documents with it as if you actually wrote it. But you can do it on the fly and you can sign screenshots or whatnot, initial them that you made the changes. And that's it. And you can hit delete and then it literally deletes it on the spot. So that's pretty much it for that. Um, the next functionality I believe is one of the best uh, things that Apple could have done with Safari. So basically the privacy functionality of Safari is is much better now than it was before. You know, one of the things that Apple truly tried to do is they tried to masquerade Safari so that every computer on in the world running Mojave would appear exactly the same to advertising cookies and you know all these tracking engines that try to track you and build profile to try to sell you stuff um, without blocking anything or using third-party tools you can now make this fingerprinting process go away with a few checkboxes and here they are if you go under Safari preferences uh, click on privacy Basically, here's your tracking preferences that you can set however you want. Uh, this is actually uh, modified by me. By default, these two boxes were unchecked. The other thing that you can do with this is you can manage website data. So there's some data in here because I ran into some uh, some websites earlier, uh, uz6.networks.com and some other ones and you can see what it's actually doing. So here's some cookies, some caches, and so on that are being stored on the computer. And there's now an easy way to just remove all or click on one and hit remove. That way you know that that data is no longer on your computer. Um, there's so many ways to look at this and everybody that watches this is going to have a different opinion as to privacy and cookies and how data is used and, and stored. Some people prefer that advertisers tailor listings to their needs, to their you know historical way of browsing and whatnot, to maybe offer you know something, a product that is actually applicable to that person. I personally don't care. I try to avoid ads. Um, especially when I'm researching stuff and I'm trying to get through a website. Um, ads are really a pain when they're not done correctly. If they're intrusive, if they're overlays, or you can't see the closed box to see what's behind them. I was actually researching a few components for this video, and I came across a site that I won't mention for, for privacy and security reasons, but I came across a site that had some good um, little deta technical details on APFS, and I couldn't read half the article because the ads were overlaid, and instead of the ad scrolling away like it's supposed to, it was fixed. So it would slide in, and then I would lose two-thirds of the page. So immediately I backed out and went to another site that had roughly the same amount of information. And fortunately, Apple's documentation is pretty good, where I was able to get more, you know, details out of out of that feature. But if ads are not done right, then they shouldn't be done at all, you know, because they they just ruin the whole experience for the person that's trying to actually get to your website. So that's pretty much that I'm not gonna beat this horse anymore but what I do want to do is I want to welcome these four apps to the Mac you can see we have the stocks app here we have the news app here we got voice memos and this is the home app 
which if you have any automations in your house such as outlets lamps thermostats or whatnot then I know you you are using that on your phone and now you can use it on your Mac as well I'm not gonna go into each one of these apps this is more of a hey welcome to the Mac uh, I use all four of these regularly on my iOS devices especially my iPad if I'm in a meeting I, I'm not good at taking notes in real time so if somebody's talking I can focus on what I'm writing but I'll lose the train of the conversation so I will use voice memos to literally pound the whole meeting down into a digital file and then I can pause it I can transcribe it I can run it through a, a speech to text engine and try to get some kind of you know context of what was said what was done uh, it's great for numbers if somebody's giving details technical information it will record it well I'm not gonna beat that up either because you guys know what a voice recording is and uh, the news app of course uh, a one-stop shop for pretty much everything and you can customize this the same exact way that you do in iOS so the next feature actually it's more of a overhaul with with terms of technology this is the new app store this is what it looks like and you have categories over here where apps are categorized by you know type if you're a developer here you go um, you know if you want to discover new apps here you can find recommendations of certain apps that you know may do the trick that you need them to do you can also see all if you want to expand the whole list um, also you get your updates from here so you can see that I recently installed compressor and Final Cut Pro updates um, and they are they're listed here so that's pretty much it I mean I think it's much more friendly on the eyes it's dark mode capable so it kind of blends in and it actually supports full screen I'm running it in full screen mode which is really nice and it behaves more smoother compared to the high sierra app store which seemed kind of clunky had to refresh it all the time if you wanted to see status sometimes updates would download three quarters of the way and then stop only to find out that all of a sudden your computer rebooted without any indication so just one of those things that uh, i really like about this uh, oh, and one of the key features that's, I believe it's coming, is, I haven't tried it, so I don't know if it's already there, but I believe uh, it's coming, is the functionality to allow time-based trials of apps before you purchase them. You know, basically try before you buy, which personally I'm in favor of, especially when some apps cost 30 bucks. Um, there's some others that... Uh, you know, if you look under, I think, Develop or something, there's some apps here that are like 80 90 There, Here's one for $55. And it'd be great to literally try it for, you know, even if they give you a three-day trial uh, and then the app disappears. I'm okay with that. Remove the app if I don't pay for it. Um, but, yeah, that's pretty much it, App Store. One of the functions that I love, and you can see I have pages open here, is Apple now made it easier than ever to scan in documents or components uh, to a file. So if you're if you're typing, you know, typing, oops, if you could type, right? If you're typing a document and then all of a sudden you want to add a picture, no problem. You can go in here you can oops edit menu or insert actually sorry insert you can import from iPhone or iPad so this is being a, a sample uh, desktop I don't have any iOS devices directly connected to it on my production system you can take photos you can scan documents uh, literally using your iPhone camera or an iPad camera as the scanning tool and this is pretty much in every app um, and developers can actually integrate this 
into some of their apps as well. So it's kind of nice that Apple did this. Um, I think that's pretty much it. This is called uh, uh, Content Capture, and it's under the uh, continuity framework within Mojave. Um, basically, like I said, use your iOS device as a scanner, and that's pretty much it. It's a neat feature, though, if you're doing a lot of documentation. Uh, I use it for adding uh, substance to any statements of work that I do that my clients uh, require me to do. Uh, show maybe a picture of a finished rack or uh, some kind of a diagram, and it's easy enough to jot down with a pencil, shoot it with your phone, and bring it right into a document without taking the, you know, seven or eight steps to, you know, create it on your phone, crop it, format it, conform it, save it, share it via AirDrop or whatever, bring it in, this will just automatically do it all for you. Kind of a neat feature. I recommend it. At least give it a shot and uh, you might find other uses for it. If you find other uses for it, you know, drop them down in the in the comments and I'd love to hear what uh, you guys are doing with this and then finally uh, basically product announcements that come from Apple the full retirement of 32-bit apps uh, which you know 32-bit apps in Mojave don't work very well there's some uh, you know sacrifices I believe is the term they used uh, basically where you know you, you sacrifice some functionality of the software uh, to make it comply with newer frameworks and a 64-bit architecture so you may now find that you have an app a 32-bit app that has hiccups or crashes you know and I truly believe as an engineer that the more updates Apple releases to this and any future OS's, you know, 10.15 moving forward, uh, there's going to be a good chance that there's going to be a, a hard realization where an update's going to get installed and nothing will work on the 32-bit side. So, you know, or if it does work, it may crash or cause you some kind of heartache. Uh, so, you know, it's time to start doing research and you know, find an alternative for your favorite 32-bit packages, and I'm sure you'll find something that's comparable. Or reach out to the developer that made the 32-bit package and see if they already have an upgrade to a 64-bit. You may have to pay a little bit more, but, you know, it's the way of the future, and it's definitely recommended. Um, the other last and final component of this is metal and eGPUs, or external GPUs, graphics processing units. You know, Apple has spent some major time on this topic during their recent Worldwide Developer Conference. And, you know, one of the amazing thing was that they used a fairly low-powered external GPU uh, demoing a game, which I don't remember the name of, but it was pretty impressive to see the performance and how smooth it was and how it all worked together. Now, Mojave built-in comes with quad e GPU support so you can thunderbolt basically the hell out of this and add four external GPUs to your Mac and uh, I believe uh, I'm not certain if this is limited to the current line of Max meaning Max released in 2018 or even seven late 17 however the other thing I feel the need to mention and this is like a bonus pro tip that some Macs older Macs that fell off of the supported platforms list may now make a comeback due to the adding of an external GPU to the system so if Apple dropped support for say an older MacBook Pro because the graphics card was no longer supported for whatever reason guess what you might be able to add a supported graphics card via eGPU and all of a sudden your Mac works fine but I wouldn't necessarily think that to be a a great thing because 
you're ultimately tying yourself down. So if you have an older Mac, you know, desktop or iMac or something that it's telling you that you can't install Mac OS Mojave on it, adding an external GPU may allow you to install Mojave, but that's not really going to, that's, I think that's more of a, a headache down the line than anything else, you know, so take that with, uh, with a grain of salt. Uh, feel free to try it out. Let me know what you think, but you know, don't take anything that I said in this video as you know the the land of the law, because um, well, I'm human. We're all human, and as engineers, we do our best to try various scenarios and test certain you know functionalities and features. But you know, there's so much inside this OS. This is truly a powerful. OS and the fact that it's free is mind blowing but Apple has made it so that their computers and their entire computing environment across iOS and Mac OS and everything literally functions in harmony so as great as all of this is there are some issues that you know especially pros if you're a pro and you're watching this be careful because I know that Mojave still has issues with audio software, with Pro Tools, with some of the the libraries that are used with that. I I work with a with an audio engineer whom I regularly you know communicate with, and and he tests stuff for me uh, on his side of uh, you know his side of the computing world, and he lets me know if something's fixed or if something's broken or if things you know ultimately crash or go to hell in a handbasket and it's really just important that you anything you do you don't do it to a production system you know in terms of upgrades or, or testing any of these features without knowing that for sure your workflow won't be impacted always have backups time machine is still there it is free it is included and it actually works and in case of disaster you can use the OS installer to restore all your data in one swoop, which is, I believe, one of the greatest additions that Apple has made to the Mac OS in all of Mac OS X and Mac OS history. Backing up is key. Anyway, I'd like to thank you guys for sticking around with this video. Um, a lot of it was talk and a lot of it was opinion, but I hope that... Uh, some of you can find some some light in all of this and you know just keep in mind that uh, you know it's hard to you know do reviews because every time you do one a new OS comes out or a new update comes out that either changes behavior and uh, the, the various components of Mac OS and it's really tough to keep everything current so I decided to compile this uh, this week meaning over the last three or four days I compiled this information from various sources and decided that you know as of November 21st you know the day before Thanksgiving in 2018 I'm gonna release this video with the current standing as it stands and actually this computer you're looking at is actually um, actually has uh, you know a beta release on it so it's running 10 14 2 Current release is 10.14.1. So, anyway, just something to keep in mind uh, that it takes a lot of work to do this, and I hope you guys can appreciate it. Anyway, have a good evening. Happy Thanksgiving to all our friends, followers, family, everybody. All the best in the holiday season. You guys have a great evening, and until next time, thank you for watching.